My concern is, is earlier you had made statements regarding uh, businesses and how they do plan ahead five, ten years and the importance of the Power for Jobs program for the stability of it. Uh, but then I go back to last year when, uh, through the Empire Zone, there were quite a few businesses throughout the state that were promised tax credits that are now being deferred. And if my numbers are correct, we're talking about $100 million in deferred tax credits in 2010-11. Uh, that number jumping up to $970 million in deferred tax credits, and then $870 million projected for the next year, again in deferred credits. Now, these were, these were tax credits that were promised by the state to these businesses uh, that are now being pushed back. My concern is, is more so, I guess, the perception um, when we're trying to attract businesses to our state or keep businesses here. Is there that perception here uh, now? Have we uh, kind of put a negative perception in that you can't really trust our word? And that's a big concern of mine when we're talking about, you know, the $200 million here, which includes $70 million in Excelsior tax credits. So, again, we're saying we have $70 million in tax credits that we want to give you, but yet we've been deferring tax credits to companies that were already promised those. Where's our credibility lie? First of all, the Excelsior tax credits are not deferred. Right, right. Okay, so, and, and we're never intended to be deferred. Second of all, a year ago at this time, I would have had that very, very same concern. I have a year's experience post, almost a year post that actually happening. And it hasn't been as bad as, as I would have thought it might have been. So with the experience um, of, of time, it, it hasn't been as concerning or an outrage by the business community or working with site selectors outside the state. This, is, this, however, is a new administration. And this administration comes with um, its commitments. And this new administration, to my knowledge, hasn't breached any commitment as of yet, nor do I expect them to moving forward. And I think that what we're seeing here is commitments to economic development, a bottoms-up approach, a participatory role, and engaging of communities, you know, it, it's a lot different. It feels different and it's brought a vitality across the state of, of hope and wanting to participate to take the corrective actions that are needed. talking about the Excelsior program now and the changes that were made um, with that uh, 70 million in tax credits um, but I go back to last year when we had the Empire Zone and quite a few businesses that were relying on these tax credits that budgeted these tax credits that were counting on the state to live up to its word and we deferred 100 million we have 970 million this year 870 million I believe next year in deferred tax credits. Now, these were credits the state was saying, we're going to give you. Um, you, you. You've earned them. Here you go. They budget it in. They count on this. And then we say, well, maybe we're not going to give it to you right now. We'll give it to you a little bit later. A little tough to run a business like that. And so my, my concern is, because very much so, perception can be reality. What is the perception in the business community? What are you hearing back now um, is the new administration, are, are they excited about this? Are, 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 are we, um, you know, is there a, a confidence level there that the new administration will, in fact, live up to its word and its promises? I, I think we, we agree with your perspective that the, the tax credit deferral did damage the state's reputation and also the confidence of business that when they make investments premised on um, getting a portion of the investment back in the form of a credit, and then that's taken away, you lose, you know, you, you lose some credibility and it causes businesses to maybe hold off on making investments. I think that the, the business community, um, at least our membership, is very encouraged by this budget. Um, I think there was a, a lot of skepticism prior to the release of the budget that there would, in fact, be um, little or no tax and fee increases, as has been our experience in prior years. Um, and uh, I think as we're, we're quite pleased at, at the budget as it was in its current form, and um, and so I do think that there's a, a restoration of confidence in, in at least the governor, and hopefully um, after the end of the budget process in the legislature as well.
one of the things I'm concerned about is I, I believe that we it is imperative that we start attracting businesses. We've, we've spent years chasing businesses out of the state. It's time we turn that around and start attracting businesses. And my concern is not, not so much, I, I think we know how the businesses here in New York felt about what, ha what transpired. My concern is our businesses out of state, when we're contacting them, trying to bring them, what is their perception of New York State right now? I think, I think the perception is that New York is a very high tax state. It's a high cost state in doing business. Um, and, and I think that there's a risk in, in making investments in the state. I think as we go down the road, you know, after a number of years of fiscal prudence and a balanced budget and a, a not, you know, resorting to taking away benefits or increasing taxes, you'll see an increase in interest in coming into the state and maybe less of a necessity for specialized programs to attract, you know, businesses sort of on a one-off uh, nature. So, I mean, I, I do think, I think there's an opportunity. New York is a great state. Uh, there's a reason why we're all here. Um, and we're hopeful that, you know, over the course of a period of time, New York can, um, I guess, restore its image as a, as a great place to do business. What guarantee do you have that the, the grocery stores or the food stores will be carrying the New York wines and not carrying the cheaper Australian, California? I mean, they have limited shelf space. So mm -hmm. what guarantee are you receiving that, uh, that, that they're going to carry your wine? Well, um, I think that many of the local, local, or local grocery stores, you know, their whole push is for local products. Local products do wonderful. And um, I, I have every, every reason to believe that they'll push New York well, products. Well, uh, the New York wine products, just mm -hmm. like they push the other products. Also, in these states that are allowing that, they're already they're already promoting their local products. So they're already. Doing With all that. due respect, your testimony just said that there are liquor stores that are currently not carrying New York wines. Correct? These are these are wine and liquor stores that focus on the sale of wine and liquors. Correct? And they're not carrying the New York wines. Yet a large chain grocery store who can get the cheaper wine from California, from Australia, from other areas. Mm -hmm. You're saying that they're going to take up their valuable shelf space with wines that aren't currently being sold in liquor, in wine and liquor stores. It's it's no different well, than what's happening now. But there's 2,700 liquor stores and there's 20,000 food stores. So right. even if just a portion of the food stores carried some New York wines, it's going to grow our industry tremendously. Couldn't it couldn't it be a, a more effective way to maybe work together with the local wine and liquor stores to to give incentives for them to push the New York products and and carry them before we expand a market when we're not already using up all of the stores that are there. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, we do all kinds of promotion with liquor stores and we offer tastings and we send our staff and but the reality is they order two cases, they order three cases. Right now I'm I'm shipping wine to uh, Vermont grocery stores where they order by the pallet. Well, it's not too hard to see that that's real growth. When they're ordering by the pallet or I'm sending someone to drive around to liquor stores for, each, for the whole day and each one of them are ordering two cases and three cases and, you know, it's and not I real growth.